I will not try to shoehorn it into 10 minutes. And then not pay attention and lose immediately. I promise you. We'll do our best. What about Slay the Spire? Not today. But now and then for sure. I like it. It's a fun game. Very fun game. Did I'm thinking of ending things ruin art house movies for you forever? That's a good question I hadn't considered. Um, I, I really did not enjoy it. And I, I am someone with a tolerance for a certain degree of artiness in my movies. Like, I'm not one of those people if, like, Jason Statham hasn't karate chopped a guy in the trachea in five seconds. Like, I'm like, oh, this is boring. I watch movies to have fun. I, I was just literally... I, I re my take on Charlie Kaufman, because I love a lot of Charlie Kaufman movies. But my take on Charlie Kaufman is that I really feel like he's kind of like an art George Lucas. And he functions best when he has someone that's a little bit more like conventionally minded to uh, to back him up and and say like hey like the idea that you've got here is awesome like it's it's really cool like the narrative center of this is is great but we need to like tell a story that's coherent at some point otherwise people are gonna fall asleep I think I think he needs someone to, to kind of rein him in a little bit on the other hand I just will stop watching his movies with the expectation that I'll enjoy them. And instead with the expectation that they're going to be, like, interesting. Synecdoche and Anomalisa are nearly unwatchable. I was very excited for Synecdoche. I saw it in our little art house theater in my hometown. And I admittedly, like, halfway through the movie, I was like, what the hell? Like, like I get it, you're smart. But can you, like... Would it be so bad if you entertained me slightly? But, I don't know. Let's try the alt path here. I know people love that movie, by the way. I, I think it's one of those movies, like, if you vibe with it, you vibe with it in a big way. I hated it, though. <laughs> I, I absolutely disliked it. After Synecdoche ended, my dad got up and left the room without saying anything and didn't talk to me for the rest of the day. Hey, maybe he was uh, processing. He might have just been processing. Like, it is an emotional movie. No doubt about that. Oh. It's pretty heavy. What are your thoughts on the killing of a sacred deer? I've, uh, I, I haven't seen it, but I really should. I was excited to see it before it came out, and I just never got around to it, but I, I really like The Lobster. I, I think that movie is extremely good. Now, on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I have not seen Loki yet, but certainly, like, worst case scenario this weekend. The favorite is also good. I, I enjoyed the favorite. I, did, I, I think I prefer the lobster, honestly, but I did enjoy the favorite as well. It's also, like, it's so funny to me that um, Olivia Coleman is, like, this super acclaimed, like, amazing actress after a decade and a half of largely just seeing her in, like, British comedy sh uh, shows it's like if somebody from SNL became like the most critically acclaimed actor and actress of all time I guess there is some like like maybe it's a stretch but like you know Bill Murray Eddie Murphy Joe Piscopo Adam Sandler Bill Hader you know what that's fair Bill Hader sure Elon Musk forgot about Elon of course, how could I? Give me some HP, man. Hey, this run's going nowhere. Are you seeing this? It's going nowhere. Robert Downey Jr., he was on SNL for like a season, I think.
weirdly enough. Will Ferrell's up there? You know, I, I kind of... I, I respect uh, Will Ferrell. I think he's like... He, you know, he's not the strongest actor of all time. He doesn't make the best movies of all time. Um, but I, I, I kind of see him as like the thinking man's Adam Sandler. Coincidentally, the Will Ferrell movies I like the least are the ones that are most like Adam Sandler movies, i.e. semi-pro. No, thank you. Dude. Send it. Watson and Holmes turned me off of American comedies, though. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Like, uh, Watson and Holmes is probably one of the worst comedy films made in the last ten years. So there is, I mean, like, he's got a lot of stinkers, don't get me wrong. I would never say that he has a, a consistent film catalog. <laughs> it's, it is really bad. It is better than The Love Guru, but I do have to tell you, I do think The Love Guru is also more than 10 years old now, so I think it's aged out of the, the worst of the decade questions. Thybro33233. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions, thank you. La Casa de Mi Padre is even worse. Yeah, didn't he learn Spanish for that? Like... I don't know. I don't follow the, the Will Ferrell fan blogs that much anymore, but I, I thought that was the case. Dude, I don't know. Freaking, I, I was talking about it um, in an Isaac episode. I don't think that could be the secret room. I was like, I wonder if when, let's say, like, worldwide pandemic's over. People have been hold up in their homes for quite some time. Uh, do you think that movies will make less money at the box office? Because people are going to take a while to get adjusted to going outside. Uh, and because they'll be used to the comfort of streaming in their own home. Or do you think some absolute garbage is going to go on to make like $800 million at the box office when it previously would have made like, you know, maybe like 80 I'm of two minds. I, I think there will be... A, my, my hunch is that there will be a short-term appetite to get out of the home and literally do anything at all, such as, like, harebrained stuff like, uh, you know, going to see the new Saw movie in theaters. Um, but then I, I... I don't know. I feel like the landscape is kind of, like, irreversibly starting that pivot to home streaming. I was losing it, though. I, I know I went off on it for like a week, but when I saw that Disney wanted you to pay 35 extra dollars on top of the Disney Plus fee to watch Cruella, I was like, you know this is about 101 Dalmatian. You, like, you know nobody on Earth like had this on their must-see list, right? And then I read some articles, and it, Disney was like, they greenlit a sequel already because it made so much money at the box office. And I was like, people have been going to see this in, in theaters? You're paying for parking to find out why her hair is two different colors. I didn't know. I had no idea. That said, it does have a 77 on Rotten Tomatoes, so they must be doing something right. Because there's nothing else. See, that's, that's part of my hypothesis there. Okay, you, maybe you don't, you're not paying for parking, but at the Vancouver... Movie theaters, you, you have to pay for parking because they're in the city center, so they get you, like, double dipping. I do, I, I miss sometimes living in an area where uh, the movie theater actually owns the parking lot and you can park there for free. Seems like a pretty sick deal. I just walked right into it. We live, what do you get when you cross an area with a car that needs to be parked. If 
free curse room. You're absolutely right. It's also very important. I only ever went to the theaters at the SkyTrain stations. Well, look, okay, with public transit, you can, you can get around pretty easily, no doubt about it. But sometimes, you know, you just gotta see Infinity War. Like, the showtime starts at 11 p.m. And it's gonna get out at like 2.15 a.m. And then the SkyTrain's not running, even if it were. I'm, you know, I got stuff in my life that I don't want to lose, like, such as my life. So, I don't know about a 2 a.m. Skytrain run, personally. So, some, sometimes I find myself being like, you know, oh, 75 bucks for parking? No big deal. They got you where they want you. I'm excited. What a run, man. Just live, forehead. Yeah, for anybody that doesn't live in, uh... Vancouver, like I guess I understand the reasoning to some extent, but the SkyTrain is like our, it's our public transit, you know, rail service, you know, like a subway. It's called the SkyTrain because some of it is above ground and goes through the air, but it's like, it stops running around like 11.30 at night, but it's automated. Like, it's not like there's a train driver who has to go home. I guess the reason they do it is probably because, you know, they... They want to supervise, and there, there's probably safety issues that happen, like, at night and stuff like that. Security issues. But still, I'm like, come on, man. And, oh, maintenance, okay. That's true. That makes sense. It's the same in Japan, too. Like, I remember Kate and I were coming back from, like, a restaurant in, in Tokyo or something like that. And they, like, gave an announcement over the loudspeaker. And we're like, hey, everybody, please get off the trains. It's, like, 10 p.m. Like, we're not, we're not running anymore. I had to walk home for like two and a half hours or something. It was a long one. Let me out. Dude, you <laughs> rat jam, rat jam, confirmed rat jamming. Uh, Dav's lost coin. I'm just gonna be straight up with you. This is not a run where you uh, beat the alt path. So I'm just gonna go back to the normal path here. This is, this is hold R. Dude, we're on Caves 2. We could do some stuff here. It, it's still possible with number 2. Yeah, there, I, I agree with you. I mean, this is coming from a young person's, a younger person's perspective. I'm old now, but I have memories of being young. But I do feel like public transit and last call should be synced. So, like, if last call is at 1 a.m., the last train should be at, like, 1.10. You could also just leave the bar a little earlier. I'm just saying it would avoid some situations where, you know, people are like, Oh, looks like I have to, you know, get a $45 taxi home or something like that. But that, even that, like, I, I picked something that made my case look better, because I'm pretty sure last call is actually, like... I think it's 2 a.m. During COVID, it's like 9.30 or something. I don't know. We, we haven't been out of the house too much since uh, September 28th. I guess I'll buy. Dude, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Yeah, it's 2 or 3 a.m., I guess, normally. I don't know. I don't have a good answer for you. 2 a.m. is a lot of clubs in Vancouver. La di da, Mr. We got a we got a clubber in the chat. What do you call it, Mo? A car hole. You know what I always wondered? I, I think I was at a bar once in university when it happened. Um, but I can't remember what happened. When you have fall back. And at 1 a.m., it becomes midnight again for daylight savings. Does the bar close an hour early versus what it says on the clock? Or does it stay open until the real 2 a.m., which would be an hour late? I don't know why I would even try to double that. They give you an extra hour. Wow. Crazy.
We have around the clock public transit in Vienna. I do here we go again. Oh, everything's awesome in Vienna. Did you know they named the Vienna sausages after us? Hey, did you know Mozart was born here? Uh, I haven't mentioned it in 10 seconds. <laughs> How do you know somebody's from the utopia of Austria? They'll tell you. People constantly talk. I'm just joking. I don't know why. I, at some point, I think it was thanks to GeoGuessr, we we came up with a uh, a bit that was Austrians are very braggadocious about where they live. As somebody from North America, I wouldn't know what that's like. Most people here are very humble about their <laughs> their country of origin. <laughs> Most people, oh wait, no, in New York we also have 24-hour transportation. Yeah, um, the trains stop at 10.30 p.m. But if you want, if you just dangle a piece of pizza on your stoop, a rat the size of a Ford Taurus will take you anywhere you want to go in the city. Minus two? There was some required creativity on that joke. Thank you, thank you. The giant rat that makes all the rules. Hey, I, I dodged straight into it. Thank you. Who does number two work for? We have... This run stands no chance, man. I know at the start of this floor, people were like, it stands no chance. And I said, just you wait, just you wait. Well, I think you were right, quite frankly. Angel deal, sacred heart. We double it so we get twice the value out of it. Trade offer, I receive an item that does nothing. Who the heck is that on the right? That's Hefe, dude. He's cool. What the hell? <laughs> what a shot. Remember when my name of Jeff took over YouTube? It's very funny for me because I think a lot of people are going to be like, yes, lull. And they're going to reminisce about like how much their life has changed since then. I'm like the same dude. No, oh, we were wrong. We got no deal with the devil. I'd like 2 HP. Alright, see you in hell. Um, could you give me Rodden, baby? Maybe. I'd like Rodden, baby, please. Did you attend any high school reunions? Um, I didn't. And I, like, I don't know if they even had one for my high school. I still don't think I would have either way. Like, my 10-year graduation would have been in, like, reunion would have been in 2016. I would have had to fly across, like, the whole country. I don't think I would have gone. Like, I, I guess I just don't see the, I don't see the merit. Yo, check this out, okay? You're gonna laugh here. This, this is where it all comes together. That would have been sick. Why am I doing that? Well, because now we can go into the boss trap room. Aren't you like 45? Yeah. I don't want to make the same joke now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say 45 inches. <laughs> Around. Worth? Told you it was worth. I told you I was going to embarrass you, Barry. Like your stomach? No, my waist. <laughs> it's, it's even worse. That's not true. I'm. I I think I'm a. I'm like a 34 who pretends I'm a 32. Like in my head, my waist size has not changed since college. 
when I go try on pants, I'm always like, yeah, do you have any 32 32s? And then they give it to me to try on, and they don't fit at all. And they go, how did those fit? And I go, great! And then when the salesperson leaves, I find some 34 32s and, and take those up to the cash register. That's, that's my typical move. I'm in this picture and I don't like it. Or yeah, like, I'm like, oh, my waist is the same size. And I, uh, like, realized that these are pants that I've just blown out the waistband on because I've been wearing them for, like, eight years. Then I put on a new pair of uh, pants with the 32, and I'm like, what the hell? When did they make the 32 smaller? It's a lot like that scene in White Chicks where... Busy Phillips is trying to help uh, Marlon Wayans get dressed. And she goes, suck it in! You can do this! Suck it in! You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's like, you, you don't need a, a BMI if you just buy pants now and then. Because I'm now at the point where the the waist number has to be a decent amount larger than the length number. And I don't think that's the way it's supposed to go. Like when I was in high school, I was still... Sometimes I'd even rock like a 30-32. And I was like... I'm like a professional athlete. Now sometimes I gotta look for like a 34-28. And they're like, we don't make these pants. Maybe we could refer you to a circus supply store. I'm like, oh, come on. You didn't have to... I mean, I'll take their number and stuff, but you didn't have to phrase it like that. Plus two. Let's go. That's, that's why I do it. That's why I do it. <laughs> oh! What happened with the resolution? Dean Norris making this face. It looks great. Dean Norris making this face. Let's go. Do I need to go to Canada to get pants that are listed like that? Well, where do you live right now? I know, like, it's... You, in Europe, they do things differently. In Asia, they do things differently. Like, I have to be honest, I, I really feel like Canada is almost, when it comes to stuff like that, it's like the worst of both worlds. Most of the world uh, uses uh, metric. We use metric for many things, and then we use imperial for completely arbitrary things. Like, why the hell is your shoe size not just, like, the length and width of your shoe? It doesn't make any sense. What the hell is a 12? What's the difference between a 12 and a 12 and a half? The answer is half a size. I don't know what that means. And like, I don't understand why we had to like make up a new measurement instead of merely describing the physical dimensions of this thing. Does, doesn't make any sense to me. It's in inches? No. That doesn't make any damn sense. Because why is there a men's size and a women's size then? <laughs> you haven't heard of men's and women's inches? A man's inch is shorter, but it presents longer. Depend on their online dating profiles, at least. Oh, good. I was just... I, I looked at that shop and I said, uh, you know what? That's a lot of stuff to process. I'll just hit the space bar and, and turn it into a single penny. I mean, I, I don't know what we're at HP-wise. I'm pretty sure we're definitely going to die, though. We do have a 100% angel deal chance. This could do it, man. This could do it. I'm one tapped. He got me. Head eyes. Is that you walking on metal? Oh my god! What a shot. That was so bad. That run had had 
like nothing going for it except number two. Bro. Wheel of Fortune, the chariot. Oh, dude. Paid for itself. How, bro? How? We didn't even put a slash marker in there. That's how you know, like, I'm, I'm hungry. There we go. I'm on the hunt. I'm after you. What do you think the guy from Duran Duran means? I don't know if Duran's the singer or if it's Duran. What do you think it means when he says, I smell like I sound? Because I, there's only a few things that I can think of that smell the same way they sound, and none of them are good. <laughs> like flatulence, for example. Kind of, I would say it smells like it sounds. Like a fart? I'm not sure that's a lyric. Uh, I'm turning the crowd. I break from the crowd. I'm on the hunt, I'm after you. I smell like I sound. I'm lost and I'm found. Like, it's just a series of, yeah. And I'm hungry like the... Don't give me that careful DMCA stuff. People, they just oscillate back and forth. When they're playing Top 40 music, they're like, I'm gonna live forever! When it immediately gets claimed by machine learning algorithms, because uh, they didn't alter the content of the audio whatsoever, they're like, be careful. I heard if you even reference a song, even like completely out of pitch without owning the license, they can send you to the freaking death row. New rules for covers? Luckily, that wasn't a cover. It was a reference. It's covered under licenses for references. Two very different things. This is a transformative piece of media. What is the best Duran Duran song? It's Rio. You're absolutely... I mean, we don't even have to talk about it. It's not even... Well, Girls on Film is pretty good, too. But, but Rio is just like, it's, it's spectacular. I love a song that ends on a crescendo. If, if I'm breaking it down to like its most scientific elements. So many, uh, so many songs hit a crescendo and then fall back to the norm to, to fade out. The fact that it ends on like a coke-fueled, squeaky saxophone solo while Duran Duran goes like, doo 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 that's, that's a, you know, it, it, it feels like, you, you know, the party's just getting started. Which makes sense, because if I'm correct, it is side one, track one on the self-titled album, Rio. That's got to be the hardest part of writing a song, right? Is figuring out how to end it. Like, not everybody can be like Charlie Kaufman and just be like, um, die. This is a reference to an earlier Blue Baby run, I apologize. Like, a fade out sucks. But sometimes you gotta just, I get that you gotta just do it. Wait, how do you play a faded out song in concert, though? You just, you gotta, you gotta finish it like the, you know, I guess you, yeah, you just stop. You don't, you don't just start to get quieter. I don't have a joke. I, I, I tried to think of a song that has a, a very notable song with a fade out, but I couldn't. I wish I had a bomb left. I uh, am pretty close to just holding R, but then I gotta remember. Um, we do have the miter, so if you just persevere, like... It's worth toughing it out. It is taking a long time, though. Bowie's Life on Mars has a good ending. It just ends with, like, uh, like the piano slowly uh, losing tempo, right? Until it comes to a natural kind of end. 
something like that. <sighs> yeah, Rush knew how to end a song. Like in Rock Band, when you finish a Rush song, it just gives you the, uh, the note highway and you can play whatever you want for 30 seconds until it ends. Bro, bro, bro. Sure, whatever, kill me, I guess. That's my bad, I, I've been trying to like have some fun. This devil deal is gonna kill me. Okay, well, we're, we're gonna run it back, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna go get, uh, I'm gonna get some water. Lips have been feeling a little dry. I'm just gonna get some water. have returned tough run so far just take the L nah man I gotta get, I gotta get some momentum I mean failing is blue baby this many times is statistically we're due And the Nobel Prize for World's Smartest Genius goes to... It's a me. Confirmed gaming. I'm glad that uh, Elder uh, Scrolls uh, Ring Dark Souls 4 copy my homework, but don't make it too obvious. I'm glad that it's... Um coming out in 2022. Because like it, it, that paves the way for Mario Golf. To be the undisputed game of the year 2021. Which I think is good. You know, real recognizes real. What are some great moments from the 2000 movie Rat Race? Okay, I mean, there's some obvious. Kathy Bates, you should have bought a squirrel. Um, Dave Thomas of SCTV fame. Describing to a uh, prostitute... Uh, the exact experience that he wants, and then everybody's betting on how much it's going to cost. Uh, yet yeah, John Lovitz accidentally stealing Hitler's Volkswagen, and a crazy series of events leads him to look uh, just like him and then drive through uh, downtown Las Vegas. Uh... Dad, I got a turtle head poking out. I'm, I'm prairie dog in it here. A lot, lot of great moments. A uh, lot of great moments in that movie. Bad movie, but some great moments, no doubt. I'm trying to think of what else even happens in that. Cause, so there's like Seth Green. And Seth Green's friend, Seth Green's friend got a tongue piercing, so he spends the whole movie being like completely unintelligible. There's Whoopi Goldberg and her daughter. It's a race and I'm winning. Oh yeah, Newman trying to deliver the, the heart. But he keeps like running out of ice or whatever. Some all time classics, man. I mean, that's a... Uh, if we're talking about classics, does Rat Race get brought up? It's Jurassic Park, isn't it? No, he's in both movies, for sure. And he does drive a vehicle in both movies. But in one, his face gets melted by Dilophosaurus Venom, and then he gets eaten. In this one, I can't really remember what happens. I think he delivers the heart just fine, but he gets some dirt on it or something. Um... Jay, you're saying you wouldn't know the movie poster? I can describe the movie poster for you right now. It has a baby blue background, and then in yellow text, it says Rat Race. And then it has, a, like, a cartoon version of the entire ensemble cast with 
John Cleese, very much prominent and front and center. You may verify my information to determine whether or not it's correct. I saw it at the, the Belleville Movie Theater in the year 2001. Synthoil? Yes, sire. We will try the alt path. He's not quite front and center. Okay, but John Cleese is, is quite prominent. Yes or no? Then they do have big bobbleheads. I can picture his face in my head. I was gonna say I can picture his face <laughs> in my face. Like that, uh, that Fast and the Furious meme. I'm in your face! And then when it flashes back to Paul Walker, he's got uh, Vin Diesel's face. A little dumpy, dude, just insulting. Face off? Face off is very simple. It's, it has, it's a very dark cover with a line bisecting the middle symmetrically on a vertical. Um, I believe it's Travolta on the left, Cage, uh, cage on the right. But that's, uh, I mean, that, that's from 1995. It's a while ago. You, you ask me a movie poster, I, I'll do my best to come up with it, okay? But this is this could be a fun game. Maybe not so much for the YouTube audience, but just bear with me here. Armageddon. Okay, Armageddon has orange, like a almost like a sunrise behind the movie title up at the uh, up at the top, um, and then it has three actors just below that: Bruce Willis in the center, Ben Affleck, Liv Tyler flanking him. Um, and then I believe that the the center of the image at the bottom is the asteroid. I think it's the asteroid coming to Earth, to the best of my memory. Close enough. I respect that, thank you. Because, I mean, it's it's been a while. It's a rocket instead, okay. The orange is very prominent in my memory. I'm stupid, like, why am I doing this? What about Dumb and Dumber? Um, it's like goofy blue text, like cartoon letters. Um, Jim Carrey and and uh, Jeff Daniels are on the cover. Jim Carrey, I, I can't really remember, but they're like pulling on their ears and sticking their tongue out, going like that, something like that. Hundred percent. worth <laughs> Norbit oh that's an easy one bright red goofy comedy font you'll know it when you see it um, Eddie Murphy as Norbit is laying down on his back looking at the camera like and then Eddie Murphy as uh, Respucia is on top of him uh, crushing him in a I believe a red piece of lingerie He's just picking the ones he knows from chat? No. <laughs> yes. Son of the Mask? That's a tough one. I feel like it's Jamie Kennedy. Like 99% of the of the movie poster is Jamie Kennedy's outrageously large face as the mask. Oh, Night of the Roxbury is super easy. It's like purple green text. And then it has Chris Kattan on the left pointing at the at the viewer, and then Will Ferrell on the right pointing at the viewer. That's I mean I own that on DVD, so that one that one's locked in my brain. Okay, I, dude, I don't know. You got them on the wrong side. No, in Canada, rights and lefts are reversed. It's like the difference between a men's inch and a woman's inch. I'm checking. I'm because ch we gotta check. We need it. What <laughs> about X3, the last stand? Okay, I'm willing to admit that one. I do not know. I do know the quote though. Trade offer. I receive an item. You tell me what it does.
echo chamber. I can see the future, future, future. Best item. It's OP. All oh, right, all pills and cards. Repeat. Okay. I do know. No, someone said Jason X. I do know Jason X is really bad. I feel like it has a very uninspiring cover that's like 90% space. And then the title is like in space. No, he's back and in space. No one can hear you scream or something like that. It's a bad movie poster for an even worse movie, for sure. Some of them I don't know. I have no knowledge of the prestige, but... It's just his mask? Does his mask look like outer space? Evil gets an upgrade, okay. Inspiring. Anyway, that was a fun game. I've picked all the ones I know now. I could I could steal the same ones that Jay did yesterday. <laughs> it's a little intellectually disingenuous though. Okay, one hero font card and we win. 30 seconds for the rest of your life. 50 and one! 50 and one! He took your career! Or a balls of steel, you're not wrong. Balls of steel will help out a lot. No question about that. Or a uh, soul of Azazel. Oh, runes don't get doubled though, right? Legally blonde? Come on. Bright blue sky. Reese Witherspoon front and center wearing a pink dress. Holding a uh, purse that has her little dog sticking out of it. I believe she has pink sunglasses as well. Oh, sure. Just kill me. Fight club little soap bonnet that has the title of the movie. Brad Pitt, Ed Norton. I believe Brad Pitt is holding the soap. Or at least someone's arm is made to look like Brad Pitt's holding the soap. Beauty shop? I don't know, man. Come on. Queen Latifah's holding the hairbrush. Okay. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's too easy. Jim Carrey as Joel Barish. He's looking up like this. And then in his mind, he sees the picture of him and Clementine Krasinski sitting, uh, lying together on Lake Montauk. With the ice kind of cracking. Right, you're right. We probably shouldn't just take unknown pills. I mean, some of the... Come on, guys. Some of these are too easy. Liar, liar is literally just Jim Carrey. Liar in burgundy font. Liar in black font. And then going, he's got a tie on. He's going, I've had better. It's too easy. I mean, I could do movie posters on Sporkle. Easy peasy. What color is the text, though? Uh, why, why male models? That's it. I'm, I'm done. I don't need to prove myself anymore. I've proven myself to a prodigious degree. You know for a fact if Sony Pictures Entertainment ever feels, um, you know, if they ever get over their cowardice and invite me to be on the show, if they have a movie poster category, it's on site. No, we can't take telepills. That's, I, I would love to. It, it can't be done, though saved. We can take the chariot, though. Is Hemolacria good? Uh, nobody knows, and that's that's why it's so compelling. Saved. Still saved. 36.3% chance of a deal. We didn't want it. We didn't get it. You'd love to see it. I'm gonna tell you straight up, I'm going to tell you straight up, I don't know where this run's going. I think there's a couple of options. I, I, well, I mean, obviously there's a couple of options. One of them is we go for the key piece. Or the knife piece. 
That's the harder one to do. Let's do it. Let's try. But wait, we don't have two bombs to go the other way. Okay, let's do the simple way. Game Awards just announced a new deck builder today. It's called JOE. Have you checked it out? That's a D's. That is a D's joke. You cannot trick me. And if it's not a D's joke... Derek, how would I have checked out the game if they just announced it at the Summer Game Festival that you're watching right now? No, they, we don't need middle finger emojis, even though we, we won the Battle of Wits. Oh, like you're watching right now? Maybe you're watching it on the other monitor? Bro, I'm at work right now. This is my leisure my leisure time. I'd be listening to the Rational Reminder podcast starring Ben Felix and Cameron Passmore, portfolio managers of PWL Capital. Come on. I might have to take this pill, dude. Your boss lets you go to Twitch? Dude, if they start... Banning Twitch from my workplace? I am screwed. Don't give him any ideas. That'll be a disaster. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I guess I'll have to start streaming on Facebook.gg. I will say it's easy to... Is easy to punch down um, or punch sideways, but I did see like Facebook and, and you might be watching the stream right now. I'm not trying to put you on blast, but somebody tweeted me and was like, um, I think this warrants a return to check the wire. And it was a, uh, a news release about how Facebook is giving up their subscription cut for the next two years and only uh, like they're, they're taking zero. They're giving the streamers 100% of the... Uh, revenue generated from subscriptions and I was like like I think it's good if you're on Facebook don't get me wrong but the flip side of that is that a hundred percent of uh, zero is a much smaller number than uh, essentially any non-zero percentage of a larger number so uh, I uh, you know I, I understand what Facebook's doing there it kind of reminds me of how, like, um, Microsoft, like, you know, six months before, well, no, probably, like, 18 months before Mixer went down, they started, like, I, f I felt like they were just giving streamers uh, money, like, via these, this currency on the platform called Sparks, and everybody was like, whoa, dude, that's crazy. Like, they're really making a move, and then, like, a year later, they were like, we're out going out of business but I might uh, you know I'm not I'm not well versed in that side of the industry the Justin tweet it, it really is so good yeah why not because we got nine lives coming anyway the tweet where he was like uh, everybody or uh, everybody around me seemed to be getting uh, paid money by Twitch to stay exclusive to the platform, so I went to my partner manager, and they were like, oh, is anybody else trying to snipe you? And he bluffed and said, yeah, Facebook. And they said, oh, well, it's been a great nine years. Good luck to you. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, man. This is a Justin, is a he's a great tweeter. There's, there's no dilemma there. Oh, man. <laughs> Okay, I think we have one HP. Do not like it. I'm gonna have to take this this pill at some point, man. I know, by the way, like, I'm, you know... In some uh, ways, I know there are great... Uh, or streamers doing great numbers on, on Facebook. Um, but I, I... I don't know, it's just something... 
like about it that I I just I just hate Facebook. I'm taking these dudes. See if I care. I don't know what to say except for the fact that I just like, you know. I mean like a lot of the, you know, companies that are Silicon Valley tech darlings are like kinda, you know, or, or extremely dislikable, but like Facebook's really up there. <laughs> Like, they're, like, the tippy top of the mountain. And then also the way that the platform works. Where, like, everybody has, like, their supposed real names and something on that. Yeah, you're really gonna drop, like, a pog champ in chat with your, with your real name and picture attached to it? I mean, Dan's got his real name on Twitch, but, like, I think that's kind of a different story. That's for branding purposes. <laughs> no, you would think that, like, real names would be less toxic, but I think it just gets you a different demographic of toxicity. Like, instead of getting, you know, 12-year-old kids who are anonymous and say, like, you know, F you, Baldy, you get, like, you know, 55-year-olds who are, you know self-made uh, and retired from their air conditioner repair business who would just want to debate you all day, right? I feel like, like, when people say, like, I would follow you to any other platform, wrenches, don't listen. Like, I'm very flattered, but I always kind of thought there was, like, an implicit accept Facebook in there. But, you know, at this point, I'm <laughs> getting pretty close to burning a bridge that... You never know, might, might come in handy at some point. Who knows? I'd still watch the YouTube bots. Oh, well, there is that. Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather go live on Zoom, man. Start passing out, like, private Zoom information. Come on my, come on my Twitter clubhouse hangout. I'll just talk about, you know... Why didn't they ever make a third Adams Family movie? It's good. I gotta take this pill, man. Do we know what this other pill does? Wait, yeah, you're right. Deck of cards. Deck of cards is too good to pass up. Great, great point. This pill's better. I told you. Okay, deck of cards in the shop. We really gotta stop taking the <laughs> taking every pill we get though. <laughs> it only takes one terrible one to ruin the game. Donation machines doing well. You love to see it. Deck of cards. Trade offer received. Trade offer. I receive a win. You receive a middle finger emoji. Dude, I'm actually super stoked we have Brimstone Bombs now, too. Because even if our damage remains somewhat suboptimal, the Brimstone Bombs are going to help out a lot. I've changed a lot. Egg whites. Okay, we're good to go. Yeah, yeah, just send it. Just send it. Anyway, Facebook. Yeah, I hate it. Like... People be wilding out over on Facebook, sharing just like, you know, completely demonstrably false stuff on the regular and then getting like validated by the dumbest people they went to high school with, huh? Anyway, Pog or something? Um, that's the ambulance come to take me away because the sight of you stopped my heart. Minus two? What are you talking about? Yeah, I did. I, I mean, I'm I'm not on the old side of the media. Or I don't know. I guess I am. <laughs> I'm old. I'm not sure if I'm on the old side. Dude, Ace of Hearts seems so valuable to take with us here. Eve, okay, so like, use the Hierophant in here for HP. Then take Ace of Hearts with you and kill all enemies easily. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's terrible? What are you talking about? 
It's freaking sick. Look at that. Get roasted? Get owns? It's 48 hour energy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I, we, we shouldn't use the stars, though. Oh, baby. Now we're talking. What's the question mark magician? That scares me. You're gonna have to TP out of the mom fight. What happens after that? Oh, son of a... Gives you the soul, but stronger? I wonder... Hear me out here. This is a, a bit of a stretch. No question. I was just gonna say, what if we can get a space bar teleport instead? Or a trinket teleport? I mean, I kind of feel like there's no reason not to tower card. We have, we have invincibility from uh, walking on sunshine. I feel like we should totally do it. Oh yeah, maybe door stopper? Will door stopper keep the door open for us? No? Well, like, honest question then? Like, why does it exist? There's no door on the fight? How do I get in then? Riddle me this. Pardon me. That's there there's something. What what if we Yeah, okay, hold on. This makes sense. What if we just lose our life via nine lives? That seems pretty appropriate. As long as we don't extinguish the fire. I guess we do have 99 bombs. Just teleport? Who cares? Yeah, but it's like, it's more fun this way. Wait, are you sure that it'll take me out of here? I feel like I should have a, a fool card just in case. Like, it should take us out of here. It would be stuck. Like, it would suck though. If we got stuck in there. So let's just figure it out, okay? Just give, me, just give me a sec here. I'm just working on it. Um, I think at some point a one makes you larger slipped in here. Or no, 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 because we had strength. We're getting bigger over time. Should go away after this room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Take me back. Mm, you know what? Why not? <laughs> it's a little chaotic. Okay, we can't take that. Well, no, we can, because that's what... Okay, but that's what we wanted in the first place, was a teleport card. Okay, it's good. Then, we take one of these, we blow ourselves up, until we die. You're always gonna teleport now, though? That's where you're wrong. Genius level strategy, strike again. Okay, don't use Hermit. Drop the Hermit card. Jacob doesn't touch it. Forget the trinkets, nobody cares. Blow these fools up. This is a fun run. This run has justified it, the existence of the the ones that were truly terrible before this. There's our fool card anyway. What's the goal? Um, uh, dogma plus beast victory. Dogma plus beast victory. And to have fun. To have fun. Of course, to have fun. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh, this is where the fun begins. If you'll excuse me. Um, the Emperor. Oh no, <laughs> every time we use it, we'll fight a boss from a... But every time we'll use it, we'll fight a boss from a different floor. But we'll also get an item every single time. Uh, I'm gonna hit that with a no. Because I think it'll make this the longest run of all time. Which is, like, I'm not against it, but is unnecessary. I, I know how to say goodbye on these runs. You used to be zany? Bro, you're like the kid who's like, you know, you go to the soda machine and you're like, put one of everything in. You know, that's not zany. It's just a... Warning sign for... I was gonna say... <laughs> well, main character syndrome. Um, okay, magic skin. Will it kill us instantly? Or will it just take away a spirit heart container? <clears throat> Betrayal. Classic, classic all-time great item. Trade offer. I receive an item that doesn't do anything. You receive two HP containers of mine. Oh, we're back. I'm too lazy to do, like, the super backtracks. Wheel of Fortune. Ain't nobody got time for that. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse you. Soul of Lilith? <laughs> oh, are you telling me every time I use a card, I'm going to get a familiar? And double my keys? I just got the conjoined transformation. Now this is Zane. Yeah, it turns out the um, deck of cards, pretty good. And and not for me to poop on. Just, just in general, pretty good. <laughs> okay, let's let's go for it. I'm ready. I'm hip. I'm with it. Excuse me. Every time I play a card, um, I will get a soul of Jacob and Esau as well. Thank you. Don't do it. It's just... Infinite Esau. Thank you. Game crash incoming. More? <laughs> More? Spent it. it's gone. What a, we're not even going to hear this, man. We're, we're out of here. How you have spent oh my god. Let, let me out, man. The heck is Isaac's fork? If Esau spawns with Birthright, it'll, it'll crash the game. That's a risk I'm willing to take. Hold, holds up Isaac's spork. I am to Isaac of Doom. Who said I wasn't zany? Who said that? How is he turning enemies into items? Okay, so like... We have the Ace of Hearts, which turns all enemies into HP consumables. And then, like, everything from that point onwards, I have no concept of, of what's happening. But I do know that when I press the button, uh, everything uh, dies. And we get a lot of stuff, which is pretty sick. We also have... Uh, every time we press the button... Isn't... Wait, no. Temperance is pills, right? Every time we press the button, we also get uh, battery charges to be able to press the button again. It's five pills. Do not do it. Three are you a wizards, a speed down, and I found pills. What a slap in the face. I think we have two speed ups as part of our rotation as well. Ancient Recall. 
Get me out of here. They're still popping, man. They're still popping. They won't let me go. It's madness. It's chaos. The deception. There was a health down in there. Uh, you know, rip, rip to the health down, but I'm just like built extremely differently. No, no. We ha we gotta tell the pills. The madmen. The madmen. The ride's over, or is it? Yeah, no. I. It might. It might be. I don't know. Either way, it do be fun though. Temperance that didn't count for echo chamber. Oh, so we're not gonna teleport every time. Only some of the time? Cracked crown? Can of crown and I'll be alright? Yep. I don't love seeing the health downs pop up every time. Just get me out. Take me out, man. I just wanna go. Where am I? I got I don't know, I got so many other characters around. What you just walked into the fire and died? I'm a little confused as well. Don't get it twisted up. I'm losing my mind when people are like, play play the fortune teller for spirit hearts. <laughs> are you seeing this run? What are you spinning around out there? I miss the Austin Powers CCG. The the critics put out a hit on the Austin Powers CCG. It was the the least performance segment of all time. It was a real labor of love though. It was a lot like Charlie Kaufman's Schenectady, New York. Okay, thank you. Took me right back. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> I, got, I don't know, what, what does the stack look like right now? Please, please, the spirit hearts. I, I got so many different levels of stack, I was just mashing Q. Does it resolve, baby? What the heck? That's how betrayal works now? Okay, so what are we rooting for here? We are rooting for... This giving us mom's knife. We're rooting for pressing a button when we walk into the dogma fight and not teleporting. If we don't teleport when we press the button on the dogma fight, we're gonna consider that an enormous win. If we do teleport, you know, S happens. Look at your item tracker. Yeah, we got a, we got a lot of stuff in there that, that didn't exist a minute ago. There's no doubt about that. It's quite the run. Are you hearing the sound? Like, there's too many flies. It's so freaking loud. Oh, let's go. It's kind of unbelievable, right? I don't even know what trinket we got. Is there even a trinket? Yes. Where? Above the item box? Oh. Blister? What a rip. No. Yes. Okay. This should be fine.
Sorry, we got plenty more cracks where that came from. All right, uh, if you'll just give me a moment here. Um. Uh oh, I think I think we might have uh, teleported in the rotation somewhere. <laughs> Look at all the stuff we got out there, though, man. Are you a wizard? That's a good one. Okay. What's happening? Oh yeah, I don't really understand, but it's okay. Don't don't worry about it too much. Oh right, I forgot. <laughs> There's a TV in there somewhere. I know that for certain. Dark bums picking up all the red hearts. The heck, when did Jacob and Esau get here, man? Thank you, thank you, dark bum. Please, sir, may I have some more? What the heck is going on? Is act the the funny part is at the end of all of this like is actually kind of weak. I don't care if Esau gets hit, man. Who cares? He is about to die, but literally nobody cares. <laughs> okay. Um. Should I hit the button? I I don't know what to say. Uh <laughs> All right, that was fun. Um I don't know if I'm gonna get another one. You tell who fragged him. Dude, look at all the fates rewards. We're, we're pogging. Drop some brimstone bombs on his freaking head. I just showed up. What's even happening? I mean, you, you know what this is? I like whoever in chat said, look at me, I'm the delirium now. This is like after, oh, let's go. After uh, years of... Uh, Having to deal with the chaos of the Delirium fight, finally we have become Delirium himself. Let's go get all the consumables down here if you don't mind. Now the enemies have no idea what's happening. He's trapped down there, dude! He's in the dirt! Oh, Delirium's origin story. I think the funniest part about this is that we didn't even really try to break it. Like, it just came pre-broken. That's all it takes. As long as you've got the uh, echo chamber, like, that's all it takes, man. I do wonder if I'm too big uh, to fit through the, sp the stalactites. What is <laughs> They're getting out of my way. I love the way that the the <laughs> judgments are just coming along for the ride. Oh man. Yo, Brim Bombs seem, seem quite potent on this fight. They're like, hey, drop a coin. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm playing him. Just got here, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, you know, it was like pretty self-explanatory. Alright, we finally got Montezuma's Revenge. <laughs> what a piece of art, man. Um, okay. 